for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Yijiyun. We have a lot of stories lined up for you today, so let's get started with a look at the day's highlights. With the deadline for the country's budget proposal quickly approaching, President Bakune calls on the National Assembly to pass it through dialogue and compromise. In a world where it seems like no one can live without coffee, we're seeing a change in trends here in Korea, with more people now turning to tea. These stories are more coming right up. We start with President Park Geun-hye's policy address to the nation's lawmakers. The president called on the National Assembly to meet the deadline for its budget deliberation and give people more hope about a fresh approach towards politics by embracing the spirit of dialogue and compromise. And our Kim Min-jae has more on the economic issues covered in the president's speech. President Park Geun-hye has called on lawmakers to pass next year's government budget before the deadline. 내년도 예산안은 당면한 경제와 안보의 어려움을 극복하고 다음 세대 30년 성장의 초석을 다지기 위해 중장기 재정 재정 건전성을 훼손하지 않는 범위 내에서 최대한 확장적으로 편성하였습니다. In August, the government proposed a 400.7 trillion won or roughly 350 billion US dollar budget for next year. The figure is double what it was 12 years ago and tops a 400 trillion won mark for the first time. The bigger budget comes at a time when the country is reeling from the effects of the government-driven corporate restructuring of ailing industries. She stressed that much of the budget will be used to create new jobs as well as search for new areas of growth. 일자리 예산을 금년 대비 10.7%나 늘려서 17조 5천억 원 규모로 대폭 확대하는 한편 예산 지출의 방향은 창조 경제 실현에 맞춰 상당 부분을 바꾸었습니다. The National Assembly will begin reviewing the budget proposal this week and has until December 2nd to pass it. President Bak also emphasized the need to transform the country's economic system to one that leads rather than follows before Korea falls into a low growth trap and the low birth rate and aging population begin to have a tangible impact on the economy. Kim Min-ji, Business Daily. Korea has kicked off its seventh round of free trade talks with six Central American countries this Monday here in Seoul. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy said the eight-day negotiations will touch upon a range of issues, including investment, intellectual property and government procurement. Seoul officials will place emphasis on opening up the export market for products such as cars, machinery and steel to the six nations, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama and Guatemala. Korea's combined trade with these countries reaches about $45 billion annually. Korea's export volume dipped sharply in September for the first time in five months. The Bank of Korea said the country's preliminary export volume index slid 2.6 percent on-year, largely due to a 13 percent plummet in outbound shipments of transportation equipment. Now, this includes automobiles, which took a hit, especially due to the prolonged strike at the nation's largest automaker, Hyundai Motor. Electronic devices also saw a 4 percent plunge, further exacerbated by Samsung's Galaxy Note 7 crisis. The value of exports dropped as well by over 5 percent. Lotte Duty Free says that it's holding on to the number three market in global travel retail. The UK-based Moody Davis reports show that Lotte's sales last year came behind those of number one Switzerland Duffery and US DFS Group. And while it was able to stay ahead of France's LS Travel Retail, it did so at a much tighter difference of $22 million. Lotte's goal of achieving the top spot by the year 2020 is also looking more remote, not only because it lost its license to operate its World Tower location in Seoul last year, but also because incumbent leader Duffery expanded its reach by acquiring Italy's World Duty Free in the same year. The Korean equity market was mixed on the first session of the week. The depreciation of the Korean won lifted share prices of major exporters, while the sell-off by foreigners and institutional investors dragged down the Kostak index. 
We're now joined by our markets contributor, Choi Jin Sok, to talk about the stock market performance and upcoming market events. So good to see you. Great to be here. All right, so how did the Korean stock market close on the first day of this week? The Kospi market rose by 0.73% to close at 2047.74, while the Kostak fell by 0.6% to close at 647.88. After starting the session with a 0.2% uptick, the Kospi market performed relatively strong throughout the session. Share prices of most blue chip stocks, excluding Capco and SK Hynix, rose during the session, while Samsung CNT enjoyed a more than 4% rally. The depreciation of the Korean won, followed by strong dollar trends, lifted investor sentiment towards exporters. On the Kospi market, institutions bought massive amounts of shares, while retail investors unloaded almost the same amount during the session. So how was last week's overall market performance? I mean, the market seems quite mixed on a weekly basis. That's right. Uh, on a weekly basis, the Kospi market rose by about 0.5%. While the cost that plummeted by almost 2%, the Kospi had enjoyed a 0.9% rally until Thursday, but Friday's drop slashed weekly gains. Although a lot of external headwinds remain in the market, foreign investors continued to buy shares, lifting most blue chip stocks. By sector, the finance and banking sectors enjoyed a nice rally on expectations of an imminent interest rate hike in the U.S., improvements in profitability, and expanded capital return programs. Now, as you just mentioned, there are growing expectations over a U.S. rate hike. Mm -hmm. So what related market events should investors keep a close eye on this week? Right. Uh, signals on the Fed's next interest rate hike from the Federal Reserve remain a dominant factor in the global financial market. Most of all, investors might want to focus on speeches from key Fed officials. New York Fed President William Dudley, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard, and Chicago Fed President Charles Evans will speak on Monday local time, and Fed Governor uh, Jerome Powell will deliver a speech this week as well. Preliminary numbers of U.S. GDP growth in the Q3 reported on Friday will be another point of interest. If data beats market expectations by a large margin, worries about an imminent rate hike might further climb. Experts surveyed by the Wall Street Journal expect the U.S. economy grew 2.5% last quarter, up from 1.4% growth in the Q2. Now, the U.S. Q3 earnings season is also in full swing. So how are the results on that so far? And also, what companies should investors be closely looking at? Mm -hmm. uh, market research firm FactSet says with 23% of the companies in the S&P 500 reporting earnings, 78% have reported earnings above the mean estimate, and 65% have reported sales above the mean estimate. For Q3, the blended earnings decline for the S&P 500 is minus 0.3%, better than the previous estimate of minus 2%. That's why experts and investors now expect an earnings rebound for the first time in six quarters. This week, we'll start first with Apple, the largest company by market capitalization on Tuesday local time. Tech giants such as Amazon and Alphabet will unveil their quarterly results on Thursday. Energy companies including Chevron and ExxonMobil will follow later in the week. More than 60 Korean companies will report their earnings as well. This list includes SK Hynix, GS Engineering and Construction, Hyundai Motor Group, POSCO, Naver, Samsung SDI, and SK Innovation. I think if we were, picked, if we were to pick mm -hmm. one company to look at, I think it would be Apple because it's in the spotlight this week right. and it's drawing definitely a lot of attention from overseas and domestic markets. So what are the expectations on that front? Apple's earnings report always draws a lot of attention mm -hmm. from investors here in Korea because the results will affect the stock performance of Samsung Electronics as well as other tech companies in the local market. But expectations have been sliding a lot. The Financial Times even said Apple is uh, expected to report the iPhone's first annual decline in sales volume this week. The company is forecast to report sales of about 45 million units on Tuesday, making the a third a successive quarter of decline for its flagship product. That would bring the total iPhone sales to 211 million for Apple's 2016 financial year, which is about 9% lower than the previous year. 
but negative effects on the share prices may be limited because the drop has long been anticipated by investors based on Apple's guidance and sales figures are expected to rebound in the Q4. All right, thank you so much for all that. We'll be hearing from you again on Friday. My pleasure. Korean consumers are tightening their belts amid the protracted economic slump. Statistics Korea reports that only a fifth of households say their expenditures surpassed their disposable income in the second quarter. This is the lowest since related data was collected for the first time in 2003. Now it also beats the previous record of 20.8% logged in the third quarter last year. Experts say while this signals a smaller ratio of households are reliant on debt, it could also mean that more people are becoming tight-fisted, a sign of trouble when the government is looking to bolster spending. The government predicts the economy will grow 2.8 percent this year, while the central bank revised down its outlook to 2.7 percent. The wage gap between regular and irregular workers has been found to be significantly narrower when all factors that typically determine salaries are factored in. Korea Economic Research Institute analyzed the monthly pay data of about 1,500 wage earners from last year, taking into consideration their age, professional experience and work hours. It concluded that workers with irregular status were getting paid 87 percent of their regular status counterparts with similar qualifications. Excluding the extra variables, their difference came to 49 percent. Now, by sector, irregular workers in the transportation, construction and agriculture sectors received higher monthly salaries than their regular peers. Women were still getting paid less than men at 78 percent. Korea is home to some of the world's most avid coffee drinkers, with the domestic market already having reached nearly $4 billion two years ago. But with the market highly saturated, an increasing number of beverage companies are shifting their focus to the tea market. Our Lee Ji-young has more. How about a cup of green tea latte with a shot of espresso or a drink made of sweet and sour grapefruit with honey and black tea? After launching Starbucks Tivana in Korea last month, the global coffee chain said it sold over 1 million tea drinks in the first 10 days. Along with coffee, younger customers have been looking for sweet and refreshing tea drinks. Market watchers say with the domestic coffee market fully saturated, both foreign and local beverage companies are shifting their focus to the tea market, which is expected to grow to $266 million this year. In fact, Korea Customs Service says Seoul has doubled its tea imports from about 450 tons back in 2009 to over 800 tons last year. That's worth $9.8 million in imports. Industry experts also point to the booming potential of the market with an increasing number of Koreans seeking out healthier, more varied drink options. I've been looking for drinks that are healthier than coffee, so I came to a cafe selling tea-related products. A number of local beverage companies like Lotte Chisung have racked up nearly $10 million from sales of one tea beverage alone, while cosmetics giant Amore Pacific's tea brand Osolok saw over a 12 percent increase in sales in the first eight months of this year compared to the same time last year. Lee Ju Young, Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching and we'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.